Today, we are going to look at apostrophes. One of the most misunderstood punctuation marks in the English language is the apostrophe. Um, there's a lot of confusion over exactly when and where people should use apostrophes. Uh, for example, some people seem to think whenever you have a word that ends with an S, it should have an apostrophe in there somewhere. And that is simply not true. Yes, a lot of times the word that ends with S needs an apostrophe, but a whole lot of the time it doesn't. So we want to look and see where we should use apostrophes. And in general, with apostrophes, there are two basic situations where you will see them. Uh, one is contractions. And the other is possessives. And in general, if you have a contraction, you use an apostrophe. If you have a possessive, you use an apostrophe. But generally speaking, you aren't going to use an apostrophe for much of anything else. Uh, there are a few rare instances of other uses of apostrophes, like the plural of a single letter or digit. But for the most part, if you don't have a contraction and you don't have a possessive, you probably aren't going to use an apostrophe. So let's start by looking at contractions. A contraction is simply you've shortened something and you've left some pieces out. And the apostrophe is going to show where something has been left out. And that's basically all there is to it. Uh, so what you want to do if you're making a contraction is figure out where something's been left out that's where the apostrophe goes. So for example, if we have did not, and we make that into a contraction, it will be didn't, D-I-D, in apostrophe T. And so this apostrophe here is showing where that O got left out. Um, a lot of people think the apostrophe goes where the words got stuck together, so it would go between the D and the N. Uh, that's not true. The apostrophe is showing what's left out. Now, coincidentally happens, a lot of times the word, the letter that gets left out uh, is also where the words were connected together, but not always. So look for where things were left out. Um, another example, uh, you are, uh, make the contraction Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. In this case, it does happen coincidentally to be where the words were stuck together, but what that apostrophe is showing is this A has been left out. So that's how you do a contraction. And by the way, this also works with numbers. Uh, if you're shortening the year, 2016, you're taking out those first two digits. And so that's where the apostrophe goes. So you have apostrophe 16. Um, so you need to remember that. I see this abused a whole lot. I see the apostrophe after the number. If you put an apostrophe after a number, that's the symbol for feet. Uh, so, for example, going around area high schools in the springtime when graduation is happening, um, I will see banners hanging out that say, 16 feet graduation. Uh, I seriously doubt any of those seniors is actually 16 feet tall. So what you need to do is remember the apostrophe is where things are left out. Now, the other situation where you use apostrophes is possessives. Possessives are showing that something belongs to um, or we might say uh, we can use the phrase of something. And this thing here is the thing that we're going to make into the possessive. Now, some grammar books make this whole thing really complicated and have a bunch of rules and things. But I like to keep things simple. And so the only thing you need to know about this thing that you're converting into a possessive is does it end in S? 
That's it. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know anything else about it, whether it's plural or anything like that. And depending on the answer to that question, you have two choices of what to do. If it does not end in S, you're going to add apostrophe S. And if it does end in S, you're just going to add the apostrophe. And that's it. Uh, you don't have to worry about whether it's singular or plural. Um, now, some grammar books do make it more complicated. Uh, some grammar books will say, um, you'll add the apostrophe S, even if it ends with S, if it's a person's name and it's singular, um, or unless it's uh, somebody famous like Moses or Jesus, or it's the second Tuesday of the month, or things like that. Don't worry about that. Just keep it really, really, really simple. And just say, if it already ends with an S, just stick the apostrophe on. If it doesn't end in S, then you don't stick the apostrophe S. So, for example, if we have a restroom, and the restroom belongs to, or it's a restroom of, women, what we do here is we see women is plural, but we don't care about whether it's plural or not. It doesn't end with S, and so we have women's restroom with the apostrophe S at the end. Uh, and I see some people who think, well, it's plural. Plural means the apostrophe goes after the S. Nope. You use the apostrophe based on whether the thing already had an S or not at the end. So, for example, if we're now at a more upscale establishment and the restroom is a restroom of ladies, then what we're going to do, we see there is an S at the end. So, all we do is stick the apostrophe on. Ladies restroom. And this is, again, I see it abused a lot, especially in advertising. Uh, you'll see newspaper ads for ladies' fashions. And I'll see the apostrophe here between the E and the S. That doesn't really make sense, because if the apostrophe is before the S, it would mean it's a restroom belonging to lady, L-A-D-I-E, which isn't even a real word. So, uh, just remember, if it ended with an S to start with, just stick the apostrophe on the end. Otherwise, apostrophe S. It's that simple.